So really, really great to be here with you guys. And honestly, so, so important to be in this conversation, especially right now with the state of our world, both our outer world and our inner world. Um, as she said, my name is Val Salidker, and for the last two decades, some of you have known me almost that long, Doug and Sam. <laughs> for the last two decades, I've been creating large-scale transformational events, mindful living events, like festivals and conferences, global summits, 40-day um, meditation and mindfulness feasts, Christopher knows all about that, um, and so many ways to invite community to come together to gather together to deepen that conversation about who we are, about what's happening in our world, to fall in love, profoundly in love with ourselves, and feel the sense of solidarity, that sense of community, right? That, to know that we're not alone on this journey, especially right now. So I've had the joy of doing that and being engaged in this really deep conversation for a long time. I've also been creating workshops and facilitating and coaching and speaking and all of these wonderful things. And in the last four years, um, after my son was born, about five years ago, I felt this calling to really focus that energy, and I created the Psycho-Spiritual Institute. <clears throat> and Psycho-Spiritual Institute, in that space, we create programs that invite people into a more intimate journey. So now I work with deep, intimate work with groups of people where we dive into what it means to be a guide or a coach and stand in ourselves as a leader in this world. So everything that I've been doing all of this time has really led me into this, this conversation about what it means to lead ourselves and our lives and therefore to lead our world forward. Because there is so much happening in our world right now. Would you guys agree? Okay. Right? Yeah. Right? So on one level we see, you know, it's, it's a total political chaos and a lot of suffering and people taking action and making choices from that depth of suffering without really centering into who they are. And on another level, we see this great uprising. It's like there's an awakening happening. People are really coming to understand who we are and what we need and asking those deeper questions. And I have found, you know, through all the work that I've done, and I've been an activist for those 20 years too, environmental activist, social activist, political activist, like really, really involved. And I've had the joy of working with so many people over the years, thousands, literally, of people over the years. And I have found, when I center into what's happening in our world, and by being one-on-one -on -one and in groups and in, in great events where I get to you know, meet all of these wonderful people that feel called to come together, that there is something inside of us right now, a deeper sense of calling, right? So I like to say that evolution happens under the greatest amount of pressure. And right now that pressure is on, right? We can feel it, right? The kettle's blowing, the whistle's blowing, literally the whistles are blowing. You know, everything is happening in our world right now that's inviting us to ask the deeper questions about who we are. And all the work that I've done in all this time has led me to this really profound understanding, which is that change, transformation, you know, being an activist out here trying to do all this stuff for so long, really, really begins right here within us. And at the heart of all the work that I've been doing throughout these years, the center point of what calls me is this deep sense of purpose around helping us remember who we are, reconnecting more deeply with ourselves and our relationship with one another and ultimately with our world. So all the work that I've done and everything that brings me right here today, I met a few people you know, on my way up to the stage today in the, in the time that we've been socializing together who have asked me, you know, what brings you here today? And you know, I said, like, on the deepest level, what brings me here is my service, my service in this world, my greater calling, you know, and that is that, to help us remember who we are. So here we are, alive in this fabulous time. It's really crazy, but it's also an incredible invitation. So much happening in our world. You know, there's, some people are calling it the great turning, this movement of what's happening, where you know, the pressure's on and things are crumbling, systems are crumbling that simply cannot sustain us. And at the same time, new ideas, new things are being born. And it's a really powerful time to be alive because we are being invited into this inner inquiry where we get to ask ourselves, what do I stand for in this world? What is it that I really stand for? What are my values? What kind of meaning do I give to the world? What is my deeper sense of purpose? Who am I? Do you guys ever ask yourself those questions? Yeah. 
And let me ask you another question. How many of you would consider yourself change makers on some level, small or large? Cool. What about mission-driven entrepreneur? Yeah. And here's one more. This one's my particular favorite. Compassionate troublemaker. How many of you out there are compassionate troublemakers, right? We see the status quo, we know it's not working, and we're ready to step up and do what it, what it takes to make a difference in our world. All right, awesome. So we're speaking the same language because all of us are here together. We're mission-driven, we're focused, we're called to something larger. And the way that we get there is by centering into ourselves. So today, in this little bit of time that we have together, I want to talk about three three ways that we get to cultivate this deeper sense of self and purpose and really take a stand for ourselves and our world. And when I say leadership, by the way, it's not just about leading large organizations or massive movements. You know, leading is something that we do every single day. When we wake up in the morning, when we make choices, we lead ourselves, we lead our families, we lead our friends, we lead with every choice we make. So just take that into your heart as we move through this this time together. So first and foremost, you know, in the work that I do in Psycho-Spiritual Institute centers around a spiritual psychology called psychosynthesis. And it's not necessarily a household name yet. Psychosynthesis is this beautiful body of work that was founded over 100 years ago. And it has evolved deliciously ever since as we come to learn more and more about who we are. And so we use this framework to dive into that question, who am I? So the way we look at it is in, in two ways. So first and foremost, who we are on the deepest level of our being is ultimately the intelligence of the universe. So quick story, the greatest story of our time told in one minute. 13.7 billion years ago, Life was smaller than a grain of sand. And then something, some force, some energy, God, intelligence, something, some mystery, gave birth to this universe and exploded that into all that we know, right? The galaxies and stars and the planets and our planet Earth. And that first single cell was created. And from that, a multi-celled beings, fish and amphibians stepping up to dry land, blinking their eyes in the sun for the first time. Reptiles, mammals, evolution unfolding, all of it coming from this great mystery, all of it part of that, right? And then at some point, we stood upright in the savanna, and we looked out in the savanna, and we saw ourselves for the first time. And self-reflexive consciousness was born. Evolution took an inward turn, consciousness. The ability to see ourselves and with curiosity to explore with these questions, who are we? And what we began to learn, we began to communicate in symbols and language. And evolution has been evolving ever since. And here we are now, right, becoming deeply conscious of ourselves. And through science and exploration and physics, what we're coming to learn right now on this planet, something that makes this time to be alive so incredibly unique, is that what we're learning is that who we are is ultimately not, not a duality. We're not separate from everything else around us. We are totally interconnected. We are literally the mystery that gave birth to the universe. We are the universe reflecting upon itself through our individual form. Let's just take that in for a second. I know it's big, right? I mean, boom, big stuff here. We are literally that. So sometimes we say, like, we take a step and then the universe meets us, and that's something we hear a lot. But I want to just invite us to sort of reframe that as in, I'm the universe taking that step and meeting myself here. So on this deepest level, we are that. We are this intelligence of the universe. And we are also these embodied forms, these beautiful, unique, differentiated selves. Right, powerfully, passionately alive and curious and exploring and getting to know who we are. We call that the personal self. So we have this personal self, Val, Lonnie, Noah, right? And we have this deeper sense of self, this higher self, this interconnected oneness that we feel, this non-duality, right? And those things are happening simultaneously. It's really all one thing, but it helps us to look at it in these two ways. So on a personal level, here we are. 
We're born into this life unstoried, and we begin to give meaning to the world as we grow into our environment. And we're up against a lot of things born into this world right now, right? We are up against a lot of conditions. Um, it could be our family values or lack of values. It could be our religious values or lack of values, right? It could be what we're learning in school is compartmentalization, right? Or that money is the most important thing, or that girls do this and boys do this. And all of a sudden, there's all these conditions to be. And we start creating stories about what it means to be human and how we live and how we're supposed to own all this stuff. And, you know, by the time children go into first grade, they've seen approximately 100,000 advertisements. Can you imagine that? That's a real number. We're bombarded with what to think and how to feel and how to be. And so when we look at this question, who am I? We really have to begin to peel back those layers to take a deeper look at who we really are underneath all of that. And what do we really want in this world? And who's dictating that? Who's shaping us? What's shaping us? And so along the way on this personal self journey, we also encounter all kinds of experiences, um, traumas, small and large. And we begin to develop identities, what we call sub-personalities, these parts of ourselves that we begin to identify or roles that we play. Right? So sometimes we're a teacher, we're a leader, we're a student, we're a mother, we're all of these things. And sometimes we start to identify ourselves with these roles so strongly that we begin to believe that, that it's who we are rather than a part of ourselves that's been created. Because who we are is ultimately so much more than the roles or these identities that we take on. So let me give you an example to make it more concrete. Let's say that somebody has this idea that they are non creative. They're just not a creative person, right? Oh, all those other people, like they play music, they draw, they draw you know, they're amazing. Me? Pfft, no, totally. I'm a linear thinker, right? I'm not creative. Not a creative bone in my body. Has anybody ever known someone like that? Yeah, or maybe, maybe you even feel yourself, like that's just not who I am. So that person, let's say at five years old, they were drawing a picture. Right? And somebody came up and, and they were really proud of it and they're looking at their picture and somebody came up and said, oh, you know, that's not really how you do it. Let me show you how. And they get this sense that, well, maybe I don't know how to, to do this. Maybe I don't know how to draw. And then maybe something else happens a little while later where they're sitting down with some classmates and the teacher comes up and praises this person's picture next to them. Wow, that is so beautiful! And says nothing about theirs. And now again, they're left feeling like, well, maybe I'm just not good at this and I'm just not creative. So then the next time they have an opportunity to draw, they decide they're gonna play with blocks instead. And really what they're doing is creating their own block around being creative. So slowly, they've created this identity. And after a while, they begin to think that that's who I am. I am a non-creative person. And then they go into their adult life and they're invited into some kind of creative endeavor and they're like, no way, that's not who I am, right? And they start getting into paralysis and maybe they get sick that day, you know, or whatever happens, but they don't show up with creativity. Now, ultimately, who are we? We are the intelligence of the universe. And as the universe, we have access to all this deep wisdom, this collective wisdom. We can all tap into it. And creativity is what we're made of. We are all ultimately fundamentally creative. But if we believe that we're not, if we identify ourselves as not creative, we are cutting ourselves off from our ability to expand our creativity, to tap into areas where we could explore what it means to be creative in our lives. And so we're losing part of our potential. And that's where we start feeling stuck. This is where we start having limiting beliefs. That's a buzzword. Everybody's heard that word, right? Limiting beliefs. Yeah. So, but this is the root. This is the science of what it's about, where it comes from, right? We've developed these identities. We become very attached. We identify as that. And then we get lost. We don't know who we are. We think this is who we are. And we literally cut ourselves off. And then we start making choices and decisions. And we're not sure why. Because we're not actually making them from a deeper sense of self, from a sense of wholeness, from access to all this that's within us. We're making it from a place of fear or limitation. And so the work, then, is to take a look at those places where we feel stuck and those identities that hold us back from accessing everything that we are. And we go into those identities. We go into that space. 
we identify more deeply with these parts of ourselves. And then from that space, we do what we call dis-identification, where we're literally coming back in through process into our deeper sense of self and creating a distance between who we are and the contents of our consciousness, which is always changing, right? The ideas, the roles that we play, the emotions we feel, all of this. It's like the blue sky and the clouds floating by, including the roles that we play in these identities, these subpersonalities. New ones pop up all the time. But some of them really keep us stuck. So we do this disidentification work, and then we can actually see these parts of ourselves that are popping up. And when they come up, we get to notice that this is a part of me that was created from this time in my life when this happened. But it's not who I am, not fully who I am. Who I am is so much more. And when we can really get that fully within us, then we can take a look at these parts of ourselves with love, identify them, see them without attachment. The loving observer notice what's here. And we can welcome those parts of us back in, integrate them into ourselves, into a deeper sense of wholeness. And when that pops up, that part of us pops up again, when somebody says, hey, do you want to work on this thing? It's creative, right? And again, creativity doesn't necessarily mean drawing or music, right? It can be the way you think or coming up with creative ideas. There's all kinds of ways to express creativity. But now, when you're invited into that space of creative expression, you think about that, you're like, whoa, this part of myself, who's not totally me, is popping up right now and is trying to take over my identity, and I can see that that's happening, and I can feel the emotions that are attached to that, wanting me to say no. But something deeper inside of me really wants to say yes. And that's the part of myself that's truly me. And so now you get to make a choice. Because awareness, and this is the second part of what I want to get into, is simply not enough. We're aware of all kinds of things. And we can start identifying these parts of ourselves and become really aware. But when it comes down to making a choice, we might still get caught up in a pattern of making a decision that's not fully from this centered space. So the next part of that is the will. So now when that invitation comes up and says, hey, do you want to take part in something that's creative? You know, you get to make a choice and say, well, well I can choose from this part of me that feels like, hell no, that's not who I am. Or with more awareness about myself, I can make a new choice. I can actually take a bold choice and say, who I am is ultimately connected to everything, and I have access to creativity. And I'm going to make a choice right now to start expressing that part of myself and exploring what it means for me to be creative in my life. Yes, I'll do it. So you take a step. Just one step, one tiny step toward embracing this part of yourself that's been stuck for a really long time. Can you guys feel me? So this is part of that. So it's engaging the will. The will to be ourselves. It sounds easy, huh? Just make a new choice. But the reality is, a lot of times, our will gets hijacked. So I want to do a little exercise with you guys. Are you up for it? All right, all right, let's try this out. In just a moment, I'm going to invite you to stand up. Not yet, but in a moment. I'm going to give you several invitations to stand. And the directions are simply this. Stand up when you want to. All right? All right. Go ahead and stand. I demand that you stand. I insist that you stand. Stand up. I demand it. All right. Cool. Good. Glad you can follow directions. Go ahead and sit down. <laughs> All right, we're going to try this again. Please. Pretty please. With ice cream on top and a cherry. Okay. Please, please, please stand. Come on, please stand. Aw, you guys are awesome. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. You can sit down again if you want. All right, let's try that again. Okay, you may or may not want to stand, but if you stand, I will be your best friend. And I have a special gift for you, too. So, you know, who wants to stand? Yeah, besties! Woo! <laughs> awesome, thank you. 
One more time. When you feel that you would like to stand, and only in that moment of your choosing, when something inside of you says, I am ready to stand, only in that moment, I invite you to stand. And really take a moment to breathe into that. And when you feel you're making that choice from inside of you, and only then, go ahead and stand. Thank you. Awesome. Go ahead and sit down if you choose to. <laughs> so what was that like for you guys? What did that feel like? Just shout it out. Anything? It was fun. It was fun? Authentic. Uh, the last one? Authentic. Yes. Beautiful. Free will. Free will. So the invitation here is to notice how many times in our life when we look at our will, and when we make choices, that it isn't actually coming from within us. How many times in our lives has someone said, get up here and do this now, and you're like, oh, should I better do this? <coughs> right, or else, like, fear drives you. Or maybe somebody says, hey, come, please, just do this for me, and you're like, oh, I really don't want to do this, but okay. We've all been there. Or how many times in your life is someone like, hey, if you do this, you'll get something, and you may actually not want to do it, but maybe you kind of want that thing. Uh, so you do it, but it's not actually coming from inside you. It's more of an external validation, right? And then what does it feel like to actually literally take a moment and make that choice? Did it feel different on that last one? Yeah. So this is that invitation to really settle into and center into where it is that you're making those choices from. Are you choosing from a part of you that has this belief that you can't do it? And so you're saying, no, 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 I can't. That's persuading you that you can't, right? Or are you choosing from a deeper, more centered space of self? So the will is a really important factor in cultivating our sense of self and our ability to stand in the authenticity and the truth of who we are and live that fully into the world. Awareness and will. A lot of times we say awareness is that in-breath, you know? We're taking in what we see, what we feel, what we know. And then that out-breath, the will, is our action. And sometimes that action is deeply aligned with what we know is true about who we are. And sometimes it's way off. And we can feel it when it is, can't we? Yeah. So it's about creating this deep sense of alignment in our life. And when we live from a deeply aligned space, we are unstoppable, truly. We can create anything in our world when we get this, fully get who we are, a deep sense of awareness, coming home to that deeper sense of self, you know, working on these parts of us that feel stuck and reintegrating them so that we feel whole. We're always whole, but we need to feel it and believe it and see it and live from that space of wholeness. And that's where we can center into the deepest sense of love and joy in this world. And from that space, we can hold anything. We can hold our sadness and our grief and our pain because all of those things are equally as important. And when we talk about looking at these parts of ourselves, we're also talking about looking at the parts that feel uncomfortable the parts that our society teaches us to run away from or escape or numb out. We have to go deeply into those parts that feel kind of icky and sit with them and breathe with them because in those dark nights of the soul is where we find so much wisdom. We get to know ourselves not only on the mountaintop but also in that darkest, most challenging moment of our lives when we are shown what we are here for. Can you feel me? So there's one more thing that I want to talk about before we wrap, wrap up uh, for me for this, this moment. And that is this, you know, as we also center into our personal self and get to know who we are, it is so important for us to stand in our gifts and really understand that we have so much to offer the world. You know, each one of us is so incredibly unique. There's no two people with the same fingerprint. The iris of every eye is different. The stripes on every zebra is unique. Every single species on this planet is completely unique by design. So let's get that too. Even as we are one and whole, you know, part of all of this, we are also so incredibly unique. And what you have inside of you that has come from your life experience and your challenges and your heartbreaks and your joy and the things you've worked on and the skills you've cultivated, all of that, your energy, the way you talk, 
All of it makes you uniquely you. And there's nobody in the world that can do you the way you do it. So we could have a thousand coaches or a thousand speakers up here, and every single person has a unique way of doing it. I'm up here right now, and soon Lindy's going to be up here and rock your world, and we're going to be totally different and equally, hopefully, in service, and you're going to feel the message and feel the inspiration inside of you of what we have to offer. Everybody is so unique. So I want to invite you right now to center into those gifts, because it is from a space of service that we step into ourselves more wholly into this world. Because how many of you feel like you're in service to the world? Can we do that half-assed? No. If we really want to serve the world, we have to give everything we have. That means standing fully in ourselves, working through all the stuff that feels stuck for us so we can embrace our wholeness and give it all to the world fully. And it is with the utmost humility and service that we stand in our gifts and say, hey, I love speaking and I'm really good at inspiring people and this is how I get to serve. I'm an incredible coach, and I love working with people to really get them centered into themselves so they can create a ripple effect in this world and move our world forward. And that comes from my heart and humility and service. So it is not egotistical to say what you are good at. It is how you serve to honor that and own that and fully embrace that. So I want to invite you guys to close your eyes and just take a moment right now to breathe into your gifts. What are those natural gifts that you were born with? Let's just begin there. That you notice at a young age have grown in you throughout your life. And what are those gifts that you've learned through your heartbreaks and your challenges and the hardest moments of your life You've also been given gifts of awareness, something that has shown you a deeper piece of who you are, the gold and Buddha within you. Look at those gifts now. And now what are those gifts that you have recognized and cultivated? Maybe you've taken classes and you've gone really deep into mastering them to consciously develop those skills. Look at those gifts inside of you now. Just breathe into those, really honor all that is inside of you that makes you uniquely you, that you have to share with the world. And now when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. And on the count of three, I want to invite us to create this beautiful, chaotic chorus of our gifts. And you're going to just shout those out, whatever they are, together. Okay? We're just going to make a sea of this beautiful offerings that we have for the world. Are you guys ready? One, two, three. Shout it out. Ooh, inspiration. Again, what else? Pampering, joy, love, a great listener, spreading happiness. Organizing. Organizing, beautiful. Yes. Rhythm. Music, rhythm. Yeah, yes. Gorgeous, you guys. Beautiful, beautiful. Can you feel it? Yeah. In order for us to totally step into ourselves and lead our world, we need to know what we have inside of us. We need to know who we are. We need to tap into those gifts, and we need to do it fully, wholly embrace all of that's within us. Are you guys ready to do that? Yes. yes. All right, I have one more invitation for you. If you're ready to make a commitment to step into yourself, fully step into yourself, to do whatever it takes to live a life that is deeply aligned and authentic, and to step into yourself as a leader in your life and in your world, at the moment that you choose to, go ahead and stand. One more time. Make that commitment to yourself and to our world. And look around, you guys. This is the community. This is who we are. This is how we lead our world forward. So give yourselves a hand. Awesome.
Thank you. You guys can sit down. I just want to share two gifts that I have for all of you guys, and then we're gonna we're gonna share it to the next amazing. Okay, I just have a free gift for you guys that I would really love to give you, and I want to invite you to take out your cell phones. And this a gift is called the Ideal Model Exercise, and I'm gonna invite you to text opt in and you will receive this gift from me and we will be connected. So if you choose to do that, this is a way that you can do that. This gift is an amazing invitation for you to step into the ways, looking at the ways that you're showing up in the world that may not be totally authentic. The ways that your kind of your personality or your will has been hijacked. And then it's gonna invite you to step into your authentic self and create an ideal model of who you are and how you're gonna step forward in the world. It's a super powerful exercise. So here's the number. Go ahead and open up your text message. And you are going to text the number 678-506-7543. I'll give you that number again. 678-506-7543. And you're going to text the word LEAD, L-E-A-D, one, two, three. Lead one, two, three. And it's going to prompt you and ask you for your email. And then we are going to be connected. Psycho Spiritual Institute. The phone number, one more time. Yep. It's 678 506 7543. And you're going to text LEAD123, L-E-A-D-123. And you're going to get that ideal model exercise as well as another beautiful surprise gift that I have for you guys. Okay, and then the last thing is, if you look around your table, you got this flyer for a workshop that I have next week. It's a two-day intensive called Leading from Within, Self-Leadership for Global Change. And we're gonna dive into all of this way more deeply for two days. So I invite you guys to join us. I'm offering you $100 off if you register by Sunday night. So hopefully some of you guys who wanna go deeper into this work will join me for this incredible upcoming workshop. Thank you so much, you guys. It's been really an honor to be here with you guys. Thank you.